Hey, say Happy New Year, fighters. Good girl. Wanna do something funny? Fingers. Poke, poke. Say hello. Poke. Poke. Frankers is on strike. Hey guys, I've been out of town this week so not really any time to put together a video for uh, today because uh, anything I did would just uh, take away from the proper video I'm trying to put out for Saturday. So uh, just wanted to stop in, say hi, hope everybody had a great Christmas and hope you're looking forward to uh, New Year's like I am here. And I thought since we're standing around, um, I know we've uh, discussed this Plymouth very briefly before but I thought maybe there's a few people that uh, haven't seen the car or don't really understand what the plan is for it or why it's sitting here and uh, and also you know when are we going to work on it that kind of thing so thought let's take five minutes and uh, we'll have a quick look at this lovely 72 Plymouth Sports Suburban and kind of what we're up against if we're going to try to restore this car. As far as these fuselage cars go, uh, this is the one that I've kind of was looking for. I don't really need a, a hundred of these cars, but I really do want one representative example of this generation of Chryslers. And uh, this is the one I decided that I wanted and one came along and I, I uh, was unable to say no. So uh, let's have a, a looky here. Um, it's of course the Six passenger wagon, not a nine passenger. Uh, there's actually a different body style number for the uh, nine passenger. Got the roof rack, nice original paint car. And uh, not not too bad actually inside. Uh, headliner shot, uh, you know, carpet shot, seats repairable, not great, but repairable. And uh, yeah, largely complete original car. And as with so many of this type of project, uh, mostly a body restoration situation. Obviously some serious mouse damage up in the headliner here. So I'm hoping that we get at this thing before we have any uh, rust starting in the roof. So, so far the roof seems to be okay. And that's a uh, serious consideration. Looks like we got some mouse damage here. So we're gonna have some welding to do. I think because this car at first glance looks pretty decent, uh, the tendency would be to underestimate the amount of work that it actually requires because it is pretty straight and uh, seeming to be uh, really mostly just a faded out nice original car, but in fact it is a pretty seriously rotten car. Uh, starting here, obviously, you know, that's very typical, not a big deal, but we'll be putting a large piece of that in. Door corners, blown, blown. Uh, back door, not bad. Dog leg, a little rusty. And naturally the rocker panel has completely failed. Quarter panel, just completely shot uh, at the bottom anyway. I mean, that is not too bad. Fortunately, we got some good news here. That's important. Uh, that's a tricky uh, repair to make and that's all in good shape. So good news there. One of the uh, things I wanted to explain with this car is, you know, the reason that we're not jumping right on this is that it is a pretty large project and it's not uh, not something that I can squeeze in around all the other stuff we're doing. This is going to require a uh, dedicated, you know, multi, multi hundred hours of restoration kind of project. And so it's really something I try to avoid is having too many massive projects going at the same time. I obviously have a lot of projects going at the same time, but I try to make it uh, so that there's, you know, one or two small ones going and then one large one. So the point I guess here is that I wanted to kind of explain why this is a big project and why I'm not just gonna quickly uh, patch this together and, and get it back on the road. It's just not realistic. There's way too much work here. There you can see the tailgate. That is all garbage. So the whole bottom of the tailgate's got to be done. And uh, I see here, this is very likely another mouse nest in the corner. 
if I push on that, I'll probably go right through it. Yeah, that's very soft there. So this is all shot. And a lot of this damage is underneath the wood grain, so naturally that's all going to go. I think that the other thing I wanted to get across on this is, this is a pretty special car to me and I want it to be nice. So the, uh, you know, there might be ways that we could patch this together and kind of get it on the road, but I, uh, I think this is a pretty rare car now. And I think something that I'd like to see, you know, looking pretty good when it's finished and something that I can be proud of and take to the occasional show or whatever. This quarter panel, you know, and, and if that was the worst of it, I wouldn't care. I can fix that pretty quickly, but you know, it, it keeps going. Everything's pretty, pretty poor here. Front door also rotten. Back door might be okay. Rocker panel completely totaled on this side as well. And uh, yeah, back door shot as well. So we're looking at, yeah, there you go. So the door is totaled. Um, or, yeah, right. Door jams totaled, dog leg, and you know, nothing we can't do, but there's just a lot of it. And I think that was kind of what I thought I wanted to explain to you guys is uh, the reason why I'm not going to uh, jump on this as much as I want to. And uh, believe me, every car I buy, I want to drop everything else and start right on it. But in this case, it's the exact car I wanted, but it is. Uh, this is not a small or easy project. This is a massive, massive reconstruction project. It's going to require the whole car to be completely disassembled. Every bit of molding and trim's got to come off. All the handles, all the glass's got to come out. Headliner's got to come out. Whole interior's got to come out. You know. Um, so that's kind of what we're up against. Now there's some good news on the car. Uh, it is original, which is awesome. So it's a what you see is what you get. We're not gonna run into a bunch of previous repairs, which is really good news. Uh, it's straight, it's unhit. It's never been, you know, it's never been attempted to be worked on or repaired before. So that's really good news. The bumpers are really quite good as far as I can see. Uh, that's excellent. Chroming is vastly expensive now. The engine is done. So that's garbage. Yeah, this is just mouse nest under here. So this is all gonna have to come out. Not going to be a gimme by any means. Looks like somebody's replaced the hood with a pretty nice straight hood here. That's good news. All oh, the trim is there. This, all this lovely stainless trim. Or no, this is, might be anodized aluminum. Either way, in excellent condition. That's gonna save a huge amount of time. Back of the fender's rotten here as well. But sometimes they rust out around here and that's all looking pretty good. Lower front valence I think is okay. Of course my favorite part of the car, the awesome hidden headlight grill and that's all in beautiful condition. Just a fantastic bit of design and uh, you know something I'll be very proud to drive. So uh, as we may, some of you may already know that the Newport I've been driving is getting pretty terminal with rust and uh, so it's going to be donating the subframe and drivetrain and that brings us to this and uh, this is going to be the hoist that we're going to set up around here this is uh, something that was donated by the GCFCE those guys are just the champions and so we're going to set this hoist up kind of where just behind where the 60 Biscayne is there. Uh, and once we've got the hoist set up, we'll be able to do body swaps and frame swaps and subframe swaps uh, much easier than we can now. So until this is up, uh, another reason why I haven't started the Plymouth yet. The plan is that the first uh, job on the hoist is going to be swapping the Chrysler driveline into this Plymouth. That way, once I start on the body, it'll already be a running driving car it just makes it so much easier to move around while you're uh, moving it from shop to shop and doing the bodywork and various whatever so thought you guys might get a kick out of seeing this beautiful old Plymouth I just love it so much but it is a massive job and it's going to take a lot of work so hope you guys are looking forward to that one I am also looking forward to it and I know that uh, 
We've got a number of other projects that I'm also really looking forward to, including the uh, 59 Buick, which we've already started. Uh, I'll be finished the Renault very soon here. And then we're going to hopefully, if we can uh, find the time this summer, I'd like to uh, get started on salvaging Tom's Impala using this uh, really decent Biscayne donor. Another splice coming up there. Once the hoist is installed, I'll be taking the uh, flat top body off the frame and sending the frame out to be uh, blasted and painted. So, you guys, uh, if you want to stay tuned for Saturday, I'll be finishing up the door swap. Uh, we're converting that sedan door to fit the hardtop and naturally that got a little more involved than I first thought, but I'm actually having a lot of fun with that. So, hope you guys are looking forward to that. Have a terrific evening and uh, Thank you guys so much for following along and for all the kind uh, letters and mail and comments and for subscribing and all that stuff. And thanks again. We'll see everybody in a couple days. Cheers. This is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>